All right, <clears throat> so welcome back to the eighth lesson. Here we are going to talk about negotiation and counseling techniques for your client. And we're going to talk a little bit about how you can learn to negotiate and help your client and how you can make some pitfalls while negotiation. So let's talk a little bit about factors that can affect the negotiation process. The first one, and obviously one of the most important, is why they are buying or why they are selling. I mean, if the reason they are selling is because they are in foreclosure, you are pretty much limited on your negotiation skills because the ultimate goal is to get a buyer and get out. If they are buying for a, another subjectively important reason, you know, their parents live next door, they want to take care of their parents, so they need to buy the house. Um, these could limit your client's ability to negotiate because the need way out desires or the outcome it <clears throat> is more important than the process, okay? <clears throat> In a case where the process may be more important, and what I mean by that is suppose you've got a uh, elderly couple that's looking at moving into their second home they already own in Florida, they may not be as important to sell here, whether they move down there in February or March or April. So their negotiation may be different because the process is more important than the outcome. Same thing with your buyer. If your buyer's living in a house and they're looking for a bigger house, for their wife who may be pregnant, but she's only four months pregnant, you've got five or six months. Once again, getting the right deal is more important than the speed. So the process becomes more important than the outcome. It is very important when you're dealing with your client that you understand this question. And there is nothing wrong with you literally asking this question, why are you buying? And if they give you this, well, why do you need to know? then you should explain it to them that you are need to know because this helps you help them. What's the old Jerry Maguire statement? Help me help you. All right. I can help you if I know why we need to buy. If we need to buy is, and the outcome is more important, like we need a new place, my lease ends at the end of the month, that is more important than maybe holding out for a 20% discount on 30 offers we're going to make. That would be the process, okay? So you need, hey, why are we buying? Well, you know, we were big, our family's getting bigger, we want another child, uh, we have not even started with our first one, but we're looking at two or three. Okay, so we're not in a big rush, therefore our negotiation allows us to be more flexible or less, depending on how you look at that term, meaning I want a good deal and I don't have to move today. So that helps me as your agent when we start looking at properties. Same thing on the seller side. If the seller says, look, we've got another house we've already built, um, yada, yada, yada. If we move today or if we move in four months, it's not a big difference to us. So therefore that negotiation could be different for you or, and your client as well. So that is a major factor that could affect how and why you negotiate is the actual, what's the reason, okay? What's the single most important factor driving this? Once again, this goes back to that reason. Are you trying to pay off a foreclosure and avoid bankruptcy and foreclosure? Then the single biggest reason is you get an offer at this minimum level so you can pay everybody off. If the single biggest reason is, hey, I just want to move, you know, I've run into a little bit of money, I like our house, if I find something that's better, I'll buy, that may change the methodology in which you negotiate. One of the questions you might ask a buyer is, how are you paying for this? The thing you need to understand is you are a professional financial advisor to some respect dealing strictly with real estate. Now you're not dealing with their stocks and their investments. So don't think of yourself like that. But in the form of this real estate, you are a financial advisor. So how are you paying for it? All right, are you paying cash? 
That affects our negotiation. Are you getting a USDA loan, which is 100%, meaning you have no money and we need a buyer's assistance? That affects our negotiation. How are you selling or buying the property? How are you paying for it? Is there anything else you need in this deal? These are questions you would ask your client. Do you need buyer's assistant? I'm sorry, yeah, well, it would be buyer's assistant, but do you need assistance from the seller in the form of down payment and points? Because if that's the case, we need to understand that it's hard to beat them up on price and ask for you know, consideration as well. I'm not saying you can't, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, I'm just saying it may change the way you negotiate. Do you need of the washer and dryer? Do you need other stuff to be involved in this sale? All of this is going to play in how you negotiate a purchase price. What else do you want to get rid of in the sale? I mean, are you trying to pay off a credit card? Now, I'm gonna take a side note here and make sure you understand, just because I make this statement doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. And this is from me, the instructor, to you as the student. You have to understand that there are a lot of people that wanna sell their house and pay their car off and go on a world trip. That's cool as long as there's equity and the house will appraise. Because there are people, literally, I've had this discussion with my own wife when we sold the house. She made this very common statement of, when we sell the house, can we pay a credit card off? I'm like, yeah, we can, but you understand the value of your credit card has nothing to do with the value of your house. If we sell the house for what it appraises, we're not gonna be able to squeeze five or 10 grand more out to, of it to pay off this credit card because you want to. But, with that being said, you might still want to ask this question of the seller. You know, hey, are you gonna pay off a lien? Oh yeah, we'd also like to pay off a, you know, this uh, second loan and a credit card. Okay, we can look at that, but understand, may not happen, but I need to know that, okay? Are there anything you're willing to give away? Now here's the problem with the real estate world. And we're gonna talk about this in a couple minutes when we talk about the competitive mode of bargaining. A competitive mode of bargaining means one has to win and one has to lose. We all keep saying we wanna do a win-win. In real estate, that's kinda of hard, okay? Because somebody has to pay more money to make the ha seller happy. And if the buyer is happy and pays less money, the seller may not be, okay? But with that being said, you've also got the issue of what can you give? Because a true negotiation is a barter between people where they'll give up something to get something. A lot of times people misconstrue negotiation with what my mom used to call haggling. Hey, I want everything you're going to give me just at a cheaper price. That's not really a negotiation by definition. That is, you're not giving up anything. You're taking what they're offering. You just don't want to pay that for it. That is haggling a price. By definition, that's not negotiation. You know, I may be willing to give up some concessions, like I'll let the seller stay for a week after closing, but I want a lower price. Um, I know of a case where an elderly lady wanted to sell her house and live in it for six months before she went into a retirement home. For that, she reduced the price like 70%. Well, I'm sorry, I misspoke. She reduced the price to like 70%. The buyer that bought it, bought it at a great deal, but gave up six months of moving in before they did it. And everything worked out fine. The lady stayed in it four or five months and then ended up moving in with her daughter in another state. And the seller got that, or the buyer got the house and they got it at like 70 cents on the dollar. So that, it was, well, that was actually a true negotiation where the seller gave up possess, uh, retained possession and the, uh, gave up price for that, okay? That is a true negotiation. Is there anything else you need to think about in this deal? You know, and I'm not even sure I can 
put anything down for you because each deal is going to be dependent. You know, how many people are going on the title? Are you single now, but you're going to be married then? So we may have to involve that other spouse in the negotiation because ultimately it's going to end up as their house when they get married. That may be something you have to deal with with one of your clients. Are your sellers getting divorced? Maybe that's why they're selling. Well, now you've got an issue of, well, I need both permission and I need one of you to sign and the other to sign and I can sign by signature and parts and everybody sign the same one or does the spouse want a different agent? That's a whole other issue we're not going to get into right now. So, you know, there might be other issues that you have to deal with when dealing with the negotiation. All of these factors will play in to your negotiation and you better know them in advance so that you don't get caught in the middle of a deal and all of a sudden your seller says, well, we really needed the full price because we didn't tell you that we owed actually more than we're asking. Oh, crap, dude, that's going to change. So what you're telling me is you owe more than that? That's just an example, okay? When you start talking about concessions during your negotiation, one of the things you need to understand about the negotiation process is you do not want to give up free concessions. You do not want to give up something and not get something in return. Every time somebody wants a concession, you should counter it with an equal value concession. Now that value doesn't directly correlate. It may not be dollars. It may be time. It could be something else. You know, the buyer says, we'll pay you uh, 90,000 for your 100,000, but we want the washer and dryer, okay? So I'm not giving up money without doing something else. If you want me to give up the washer and dryer, then I actually want 103,000. That's just a very bad example, as a matter of fact. But understand, you shouldn't give up something free without getting something. Craft your concessions wisely. Keep count of them. How many are you acquiesced to? Have you given four or five things? And if you think back to the chapter or the lesson we dealt with about title work, and we talked a little bit about the seller has ordered preliminary title, and I said, I tend to allow that I, unless my buyer's really adamant, I will say, hey, we'll use the title company. See, I already see that as a concession that I've given. So that kind of allows me in my mind to think about something. Hey, we want to close early. We want pre-closing possession for my buyer, but we allow, went with your title company. So you could use that as one of these um, concessions that you keep count of. I consider that a concession personally. You may not. What you don't want to do is negotiate your first or major concession right out of the gate. And typically in a competitive mode negotiation, the largest or most important negotiation is what? Money. That's typically what the one everybody wants to go to, just lower the price. Realize that that is the most important one and it should be held last. Is there something else you could give them instead of money? Is it post-closing possession? I asked for 90,000, you wanted 95. How about we stay at 90 and I let you stay another week so that you have time to move your stuff out without being rushed? That's an example. It could work the other way. You know, you want me to help you with closing costs. I can do that, but you certainly can't beat me up on the price. That would be an example of a major concession is money in that case. Yes, I will help you with closing, but I now want the full asking price of 100000 So you make sure that you understand what is your major concession. And typically in the competitive mode that we deal in real estate, it's money. Is there any other concessions that you can give away first? I don't know. That is part of being that professional and working with your buyers and sellers, all right? So let's keep going.